The following story has been brought to you by storiestoinspire.org. There was a Yid who unfortunately was not religious. A Bacha, he's not religious, doing his thing, traveling the world, wanting to see everything he could, enjoying his life, enjoying everything about what he could do. His brother, Haredi religious Jew, says to him, where are you going next? Are you traveling here? You're traveling there? You're going all over the world. Where are you going next? So I'm going to Israel. Going to Israel? Yeah. But he says to his brother, calm down. Calm down. I'm not going for religious reasons. I heard Elat is gorgeous. And I heard that the Dead Sea is amazing. And I heard, you know, there's lots of places over there that I want to go visit, that I want to see. I am not going for religious reasons. His brother says, would you do me one favor? Do me one favor. What do you want from me? There's a yeshiva called Eishat Torah. Do me a favor. Go there and listen to one lecture. One, that's all. I will never ask you to do anything again. Never. Never. Brother says, get out of here. I'm on religious stuff. I'm not, that's not what I'm going to Israel for. I'm going to chill. I'm going to have fun. Take pictures. Eat falafel. That's going to Israel, right? It's going to be Gavaldi. His brother says, he drives him crazy every day. Every day he says to him, please, 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 one lecture. I will never ask you a favor again. You'll never have to do anything for me again. He says, you know something? If it's going to make you feel good, and if it's going to get you off my back, that you will never ask me anything again, I will go to one lecture in Eishat Torah. No problem. But his brother is so excited. Oh, this is it. Turning point. Religious. He's going to come out. Haredi Jew. It's going to be amazing. So he goes to Israel, and the last day of his tour, they told him to go to the Wailing Wall. The Wailing Wall, apparently the people are there, and you pray, and there's a wall, whatever, okay. He doesn't know too much about things, didn't grow up so religious. Anyway, he says, okay, we'll go there the last day of the trip. And he's there, and he remembers, oh no, I told my brother, and I promised him that I would go to one place and listen to one lecture. I'm going to do it. He goes, oh, so where's Aisha Torah? And they're like, oh, you're very lucky, it's right here, up the steps. You can believe it. He wasn't going to travel there. But he's only there. All right, I'll go. I promised him, I'll do it. Oh, I'm a man of my word. He goes in, says, I need, I need a class. I need a lecture. What, what, what's going on right now? Oh, there's a Gemara class starting right now. He says, okay, fine, no problem. Goes inside. The most boring class ever. They're learning Baba Metzia. They're learning any Metzias. They're talking about returning our objects. He's like, seriously? This is what my brother wanted me to hear? This is ridiculous. But you know what? A word's a word. It's a 45 minute lecture, 45 minute shit. He sat there. He sat there. It was over. Rabbi, great lecture. And left as quickly as he possibly could before they would get him. He called up his brother. He said, I did it. His brother's, yeah. He's waiting for like, he was waiting for the words. And I decided I'm staying in Yeshiva forever. And I'm just... He said it was the most boring class in the world. So what was it about? Returning lost objects, Gemara, Baba Metziah or something. His brother was so upset. The one class he had to go to in Asia Torah was that. Come on! He couldn't believe it. But that was it. His brother promised him. He kept his word. He proud to keep his word that he won't say anything else. And that was the end of the story. This boy had a next destination. His next destination was India. That was his next place that he wanted to go check out. Whatever. Going to India. Beautiful. Goes to India, and he's walking around with one of the priests, gurus, whatever it is. He's walking around with them, they're schmoozing about his religion, you know, how it works in India, and telling him the Gavaldiga Mailas of their religion. And as they're walking, he's walking with this high priest, you know, a big rabbi over there. The priest sees a wallet on the floor, and he picks it up, and he opens up the wallet. Now, in this wallet is wads of cash. But not only words of cash. There's a driving license, there's credit cards, there's all sorts of things. The priest smiles, puts it in his pocket. The guy says to him, are, are, you, are, you, are you planning on giving that back? Are you going to return that? Because, you know, there's a credit card and, with a name on it and there's a driving license with a picture and I'm sure you could... Huh? Finders, keepers, losers, weepers. Come on, it's mine. I got it. It's a sign from God that it was meant to be for me. He couldn't believe it. He says, but... But someone's going to be really upset. There's a lot of money in there. It belongs to someone. And you can find out who it belongs to. Priest says, get out of here. I found it. God sent it to me. This guy said, 
I can't be in such a religion because I remember a few months ago I was in Israel and I went to a class about the idea of returning that which does not belong to you and they must be real these people must be the authentic ones if they care about somebody else's property and he decided I'm coming back to Israel to hear more about this religion he came back and here I am, no, and, and the Maisa, he turned his life around, and when he turned his life around, it all came from there. Enjoyed this story? Come again. Bring a friend. StoriesToInspire.org.